Welcome to another episode of Two Chairs, One Technology, our Roden Schwartz video blog on interesting aspects around LT and LT Advanced. With me another time is Torsten Hertel. Torsten, welcome. Thanks, Andreas. Torsten is our pro uh, product specialist on OTA over the air. Torsten, in our recent discussion, I learned a lot about OTA, so thanks for this, um, about OTA systems and our approach to test LT MIMO. But this is all on the receiver, so what about transmitter testing? So on the transmitter side, we basically have uh, a pretty new feature uh, that we're offering, um, and that is uh, to get us more competitive with uh, some of the other uh, system approaches out there. And it's basically uh, relying on the spirals cut. And um, in order to talk about the spiral cut, I want to maybe highlight uh, some of the uh, key differences between uh, conical cut systems, which is the system architecture that we're using in our systems. So on the left side here is the single test antenna uh, that we're utilizing, we have a single test antenna that is moving mechanically around the device under test in order to scan uh, from an ele elevation perspective. Uh, on the other side is the distributed probes or the, the ring approach where you basically scan uh, multiple probes electronically. Um, from a high level perspective, yes, scanning probes electronically uh, will allow you, generally speaking, a faster scan around the device under test. But let's go back to the receiver test for just a minute. This is where you test uh, on 60 points around the sphere the receiver or the, the sensitivity as a function of base station power. So the, the, the long testing is really the sensitivity testing and the mechanical moving or the, the positioning of the device as well as the, the test antenna uh, it's just a very, very small fraction of the entire test time. That's slightly different when you look at the uh, TRP approach. Here you're looking at 264 points that you need to measure transmit power around the device on a test in 3D. At each one of these points, you're looking at a transmit power measurement, and that is very, very fast. Especially if you're using a power meter or, or spectrum analyzer, for instance, you basically go to the point, take a power measurement, and you move on. So this is where the mechanical movement or with the positioning uh, of the test antennas and the device under test uh, is the, um, the most time intensive part because the power measurement is very fast. So if, if you look at it, um, the step-step approach um, that is the, the classical and the CTI approved way of, of doing things is where you basically position your device and your test antenna uh, to each um, point on these spheres. So you need to have 264 movements of the device slash uh, the test antenna. The newest approach that we are implementing now, <coughs> sorry about that, is the, the spiral scan where you basically move the device under test and the test antenna in a continuous motion. And in, in this case, you're taking points at random positions on the 3D sphere, uh, but the movement is continuous. So that means you're not stopping during the measurement at all. So that allows us um, to take very, very fast uh, TRP measurements. Before I go into maybe the, uh, an, an example, I want to maybe highlight the step-step approach in a video that we just took on uh, on our uh, OTA system in the back. So in this video, you're seeing the test antenna being moved at to the discrete points uh, theta on the 3D sphere that we highlighted before, and you're seeing the uh, device under test also being moved to discrete points in azimuth position phi. So the video of the spiral scan now really outlines the continuous movement of the test antenna around the device under test in elevation, but it also outlines the continuous movement of the device under test in phi, as you see in the video right here. Okay, let's look at the comparison of these two approaches, step-step and spiral scan. So the first approach here, step-step, we looked at 264 points on the 3D sphere, its TRP that we measured uh, in our system was 29.3 dBm, and the measurement time 
um, well, six minutes for a single channel. So a single channel means that uh, you have to test on more channels. On how many channels do you test normally? We usually test on three uh, channels per frequency band. Oh, that means then 18 minutes for the traditional step-by-step -step Absolutely. So a at 15 minutes, that's, uh, that, that's hurting people. That's, that, that takes a long time, especially because you have a number of different bands and a number of different technologies. Mm -hmm. So from a measurement time perspective, still a lot less than TIS, but it adds up. So this is where we were really trying to cut down the measurement time with the uh, spiral scan approach. And a as you can see here in this table, it did. So in the, uh, in the second row right here, the uh, spiral scan, what I consider fast, didn't take as many number of points on the 3D sphere, roughly 170, so less than 264. But look at the correlation. 29.0 dBm, which is uh, awfully close to 29.3, so it's totally within the measurement uncertainty. And its measurement took uh, 45 seconds. And then the conservative, what I call conservative approach, is uh, taking 330, roughly, points on its 3D sphere, much more than 264. Uh, and again, great agreement with the results for the step-step approach with uh, 29.1 dBm measurement time of 90 seconds. So if you translate that to three channels per frequency band that you usually take, and then of course for every technology, you can, you can clearly see the, the speed ad advancements um, with a fast approach, two minutes for all three channels, and in the conservative approach, four minutes per, per band, three channels. So it's a significant speed up to uh, our classical step-step approach. Oh. Well, that's, that's very impressive, Thorsten. Thank you very much for the explanations on uh, testing a transmitter in an OTA approach um, using the spiral uh, testing that Roden Schwartz just implemented into its OTA system. Thanks for watching Two Chairs, One Technology, a Roden Schwartz video blog on LTE and LTE Advanced. Thanks, Andreas. <laughs>